I'm here to talk about the movie. Bring on the first course. This is the first time I have ever been typecast as a little dog. Hi, that feels embarrassing. <laughs> when they want a dog, Cheats is the guy you come to. I'll bite him if you want me to. At the times of my career, this is a highlight. I never thought of myself as a standard poodle. Absolutely. A lot of women considered me a dog, so... That is not a dog. Uh, woof. This is why dogs and people shouldn't talk. Take me to your leaders. Leaders? The dogs who walk you? The... I walk them. Sure you do. I'll get to the bottom of this. I like this movie because it's very touching and it was funny and, um, and very moving and and uh, and I like the story. How lucky for us. It's sweet, you know, and it's about the friendship between um, dogs and people. Thank you very much, ma'am. I like the idea of talking dogs. I mean, it's not the first time we've seen that, but um, and it's not the first time we've seen aliens, but we've never seen aliens as dogs. Well. I don't know about that. The concept actually came to me from Jim Henson Pictures, uh, who called me and they had this idea that they had bought this radio play called uh, Dogs from Outer Space. Don't touch that! I know what I'm doing! That title just struck me because I had just adopted uh, my own dog. Love and loyalty. <laughs> brought it home and uh, put the dog in the corner of my bedroom and sort of looked at the dog and I kept on thinking it looks like an alien. I started writing this probably five or six years ago and it's kind of amazing because I, at the time when I was writing the script, I had cut out from a dog book these photos of the breeds that um, I thought each dog looked like. Can we just talk about how pretty I am? I was, I was able to get in the voice of the dog, I think, a little bit more easily with those pictures above my computer as I wrote. When did these human-dog relationships start, anyway? Believe it or not, dogs here are called man's best friend. As soon as I read John's script, I recognized in it a very complete, satisfying movie that was funny and dramatic and had something that kids would love, something that adults would love, and dog lovers will love. Unbelievable! It's true! When we would have script meetings, John would like act out all the voices and do all the roles as a way of like describing what he was thinking. When I would talk about the dogs, I would be in character talking about the dogs. Why on earth would we do that? It became clear in the meetings that John just had this entire movie in his head. Lisa Henson, who gets the credit, my, my partner on this, said to me, oh my God, do you think he could direct this movie? And suddenly it was like, oh my God, of course he could. Action! Help. I was nervous because obviously seven dogs and four kids um, for a first feature is daunting. Um, <laughs> had more than enough people telling me, are you sure this is what you want to do? Kids and dogs, kids and dogs, okay. Why did you step in like that? I felt so passionately about the script and I, I felt like if I didn't do it, then it this, this kind of a movie in particular probably would never have been executed anywhere near what I had sort of initially envisioned, so I dove in. Make sure you come in tight to her here. So make sure you're right, right in here with her and you're looking eye to eye with her. Human casting, first and foremost, was all about the boy that would play Owen. We had no movie without that boy. The best way to achieve your goals, Owen, is to make a plan and work hard and always keep your eyes on the prize. That's an exact quote, isn't it? I want my prize. We looked a, real, a really long time to find Liam Aiken, our star. We did a nationwide search, and we found him rather late in the game, and we were blown away when we saw him. When I met him and he read, it was an entirely different feeling from other reads, and it was thrilling, and we were so lucky to get him. Liam Aiken was kind, patient, always had dog treats in his pockets. You guys are making me look nuts! All this stupid dog star talk, the greater Dane. I want proof. Well, Owen is, uh, is different because he's a lot more, um, I'd say he's a lot more, like, eccentric. Kind of like a nerd. So it's kind of like a twisty kind of uh, fun role to play. Works for me. Once we had our boy, um, I had been wanting Molly Shannon for a while because she's an old friend of mine. 
and I love her. My hair is set. I'm ready to perform. <laughs> <laughs> well, John asked me if I would play this part, and um, and um, of course, it's like such a you know a dream to work with my friend, who who I love and have so much respect for. <laughs> you oh somebody's got a little cold oh poor baby hop to it all can we tie her up out back please i know her well enough to know she's brilliantly funny but also as a sensitive person and a sensitive actress and, and one with real understanding and, and one i knew i could connect with my character, Mrs. Baker, is a little quirky and stuff, but it's not corny comedy, you know? It's like deep and funny, I think. So I, I love it. I love doing this. This is more the direction that I want to head in. Are you sure this is the one, Owen? Kevin Nealon was a perfect choice because I like the idea of bringing comedic actors to the table that sort of allow them to do more sensitive material than they might otherwise have the chance to do. It's because of all this constant moving we've been doing, isn't it? Well, I'm sure it's not helping. Well, the deal on the house hasn't officially closed yet. It's not too late to change our minds. I always enjoy playing dramatic roles, you know, because I don't get to play that often. And, um, and I think, um, because I do so much comedy, and as does Molly, we just, we just, um, you know, drool at the opportunity to do something dramatic. Whoa! What was that? Sound like a sonic boom. Yoo-hoo, smile! Molly and Kevin are so um, perfectly cast for this. And the three of them with Liam round out a family that everybody can relate to. Such a fun scene. We did good. I love, I we love this one. <laughs> we got praised by the director. Action! Run! When we went about casting Connie, uh, which was the other critical child role there, we were being told there were two young African-American actresses in Vancouver we could look at. Cut. And so we looked all over the States, and, and we saw some wonderful young kids and stuff like that, but then we looked at the two in Vancouver. Lo and behold, one of those two was this really charming, um, really lovely young girl, Brittany Muldowan. Shut up, you can't fly. <laughs> You can try all you want. You're an earth dog. The other big key casting that we had to do was the voice actors. All I cared about initially was getting the right Hubble because we needed um, the perfect person and I had only ever thought of Matthew Broderick. I didn't realize I'd made such an impression on them. I know it sounds weird to be like so obsessed with one actor for one part, but um. I just heard his voice in that little dog. Oh, please! I read it, and actually, I just thought it was a very clever, funny script. Thank you. Thank you, Earth Dogs. Nice to see you. I'm pleased to visit your fair planet. La-di-da, la-di-da, etc., and so forth. Hmm, not bad. Code Red! After that, the thing I was most passionate about was that you wanted to feel like these dogs uh, were characters, ensemble. Red light, red, red light, light, whoa, red whoa, light. Whoa. Green needs go, 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 We needed to get great comedic actors that could also be real. No problem! Carl Reiner, Brittany Murphy, Donald Faison, Delta Burke are broad, strong personalities, all of whom I think fit these dogs so really vividly well. Isn't that crazy? Super crazy! Are we allowed to talk to him like this? I think my life thus far has probably been the best preparation towards this character. Get out of the way, girl! You always tangling my leash. I'm the biggest dog of the bunch, pretty much, so... That's, that's cool. First class limousine service, first class catering. I've had all kinds of dogs, so I, I and I've talked to them. The, and this is the first case that they talk back. Sweet biscuits will be here all day! Now, I can do barking. I was okay with the growling. But that snarling I had some trouble with. We also had the two uh, serious dogs, um, the Greater Dane and the Greater Dane's henchmen to cast. And that was tricky, too, because we needed to persuade the audience that there was a dog, a royal queen of the universe that rules over dogs. The Greater Dane! 
Isn't there one among you who knows how to give your leader a proper welcome? What helps it so much is Vanessa Redgrave. I mean, I think it's pretty clear she's one of the great actresses living today. I can't believe Vanessa Redgrave is in our movie. Back! Yes, ma'am. Uh, right away, ma'am. I'm just gonna... Um, uh, yes, ma'am. Cheech Marin, on the other hand, playing her henchman is this great sort of comic pairing that you, I don't think you'd really expect to see the two of them together. <laughs> It's like a three-speed blender. As you read the character and you know and you get a picture of what the character is, you kind of just start get, doing that voice. Shut your yap! All of those voices make total sense with those dogs. And you don't think about them. You think that's exactly what that dog should sound like. Sounds big. Action! I loved working with those dogs. I mean, they always say there's that old adage, don't ever work with kids and dogs. And but. In our case, it was working with the dogs was pure pleasure, um, and, and that was because of the trainers. Bonnie Judd is a brilliant animal trainer. She is just a great sort of person to sort of handle dogs and train dogs and has this sixth sense about dogs. And she started collecting these animals for me when I was very specific with her about, you know, this is really what I'm looking for. Speak! John, the director, really had a clear understanding as to what kind of dogs he wanted, as meaning what breeds of dogs he wanted. So I started off with taking pictures, and those pictures were submitted to him and the producer, and then they picked out of those pictures which ones they like. The lead dog was the only dog that he wasn't really sure, you know, what he wanted. I am Canid3942. Flynn, who plays Hubble, was not at all supposed to be cast. He was just someone's pet, and Bonnie was showing uh, him the dog just to show him the breed. I saw a star, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and I was like, oh boy, that dog's face. Look at this dog's face. Oh, don't give me that look. I was on all fours, crawling around him, looking at him from, from every angle. I'm, I'm you know, treating him like he's Joan Crawford or something. Why? He has a gait, a walk to him that is Perfect. He's light and bouncy and totally, but he's scrappy and mutt-like. He was the perfect sort of sensitive, but kind of you want to see a boy have a dog that looks like that. I think you're a good boy, too. After we finished the casting process, we sort of moved on to training, of which um, I started each dog myself. And as I worked each uh, particular dog, and I got to know the dogs better, I then chose trainers that have the same kind of personality as what the dogs do. Most training is done as a uh, routine. Rise up. Rise up, good, stay. So everything we do is scripted, and we try to keep the uh, director as close to that script as we possibly can. And on this particular show, we had storyboards. And what I really put into their heads right off the top is these dogs would be the best if we kept, keep to the storyboards. We keep to exactly what we're training them. The meditation scene was a really hard thing. Having all the dogs upside down on their back and staying perfectly still while the crane came across this absolutely gorgeous lake. As gorgeous as that all is, what other people don't understand is all those dogs are lying down upside down until that crane settles. Weirdly enough, I think that was only shot twice, at the very most three times, and they nailed it. Maybe an old dog, but I, I like to learn new tricks. I get it, get it, get it, get it, get it, get it. It sort of becomes like incredible to watch the trainers work, and, and they become your closest partners for a while. I could talk to the trainers about exactly what we needed. One more time, Barbara Ann needs to look at that ball. And then exactly how we were gonna shoot it. So it was about placing the trainers where they could most easily be uh, to catch the eye line of the dog, but then so that eye line would match up with camera. Go with them. Go with them. All the trainers are great, and all the dogs are great too. They were all very happy and energetic and uh, kinda. Happy to see everyone in the morning. Can't believe you fell for that one. My experience working with all the animals, I think it's just fun because you're just, you're constantly working with them and you could be really down and then you see them and it's like, oh. I like to work with uh, Nellie, the Italian Greyhound, just because she's so small and a little afraid and it's great, it's very gratifying if you actually get her to trust you. <gasps> I'm so nervous, I forgot what I was going to say. Everybody falls in love with the Italian Greyhound. It's 
so lovable. <laughs> Losing my collar a notch. I got a foof in my cock. Chip was great. Chip was kind of like, it was. he was happy to see you, and he kind of kind of didn't want him to lick you, though. Dr. Linolo. There you go. It was kind of, kind of, yeah, drooly. I would like to apologize in advance for any farting. Only speak. Go ahead, speak. Speak. I was very intrigued by the idea of, like, trying to capture real dogs 100% throughout an entire film doing extraordinary things. On your mark, good, stay. Look. All right, look here. All right, come on. There are many scenes in the movie where we have full-on takes of whole scenes that the dog did exactly what the dog needed to do for a solid two minutes. And I'm talking walking, hitting points, turning the head, stopping, looking, continuing. It was astonishing. But achieving that is a whole other matter as far as asking a 12-year-old boy to have a scene that carries meaning with a dog when a trainer is over his shoulder throughout the entire scene in between everything the boy is saying. I don't know how a focus like that can come when you're 12 years old. When? Stay. That's what friends do. Sit. Just had to uh, sort of concentrate a little more because, um, you know, the trainers are in the background saying, sit, sit, lay down, you know, back, back. So what uh, kind of happens with me is I kind of like tune everything out. So I really don't hear anything unless I like stop and then I hear like the director. Cut. That's great. Pay no attention to the dude in the red suit. When we had Molly come on to do her scenes, she came into a group scene one day, and we had been working like this for about a month. So she came on set for a group scene in the backyard, and there were seven trainers on, and it's chaos. It's it's insane. There are, pe there, there are people literally, you know, screaming throughout scenes. After we shot that scene, Molly came over. She said, that was like acting in an insane asylum. And I. And I was like, what, what are you talking about? And she said, that, all those people screaming. I'm like, oh, I didn't, oh, you're, this is your first time doing this. And cut. So sort of this moment of like realization, oh yeah, you, not every film is shot this way. Day, 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 day. Molly Shannon went, wow, they just don't prepare you at acting school for this kind of thing. Dane's right in the middle. We had what we called stiffies which were styrofoam versions of the dogs. And that was how you set your shot up. They're basically the stand-ins. This is a potentially odd and strange cut, which is our specialty. This set felt very alive and kicking. Every day you walked in, you were dealing with kids and dogs. And I sort of said right at the beginning, this set has to be a happy set. If we're not happy working with kids and dogs, we are losers. <laughs> he loves it. He loves it. All right. Everyone who worked on the film was fun. It was just a great set. We were all laughing every day. Um, but the way of working was kind of unusual because I had in my mind, when I had written the script, had all these things that I thought, OK, pipe dream. This you know, would be great if we can get the dogs to do this in one shot without using split screens. I must say, the humans are much more domesticated than I expected. Bonnie and her group of trainers were um, so responsible for what you're seeing. Oh, Cassie! Good! Cassie! If she wasn't working at that level, the movie would be nowhere. Right now, you understand what I am saying to you? Yep. Can I have a cookie? A lot of movies like this will use puppets or animatronics for certain things that the animals need to do. And what I really wanted to get back to is, even though we've had this remarkable sort of surge in technology that has allowed such wonderful visual effects in movies, with dogs, I always felt that the audiences have a real sense that when you're not watching a real dog, you know it. We have one CGI dog because you can't get a dog to fly. But beyond that, it's all real dogs, no puppets, no animatronics, and three split screens in the entire movie. Show off! It was our goal to have a minimum of special effects. Now, we certainly need to use animation, what we've been calling muzzle replacement, to make the dog's mouths move. We'll do whatever we need to do. The approach to the story, um, the whole process of talking dogs, in a very natural um, fashion, that we weren't going to try and over-animate the characters. Oh, right. No um, eyes popping out, no wide mouths whatsoever, um, they had to look natural so that you 
actually could believe that that dog was talking to you. Did you just learn how to talk? Here come the questions. Uh, let's just say your hearing suddenly got a lot better. They were incredible for sort of making these muzzles of these dogs sort of feel like exactly the mouths of the dogs and then just sort of subtly uh, putting the words in their mouths. You have a lot of explaining to do. Here we have our wonderful dog, Shep, and you'll notice there's no textures or fur on him. That's simply because this is the animation stage. This is where we pull a performance out of the dog. Basically, what it is, it's similar to a digital puppet. We've got all these sliders and controls that we can pull certain looks and uh, attitudes. It may look to you like people are in charge, but let's face it, you don't see us picking up their poop. I think one of the biggest challenges of this film um, was working with the fact that dogs change from day to day. The lead dog, Hubble, as a border terrier, his fur is very susceptible to changes in lighting, the oil. There's a very wide range of physical appearance to these dogs. And one of the biggest challenges was to create a 3D model that could then go over top of these dogs so that you can adapt to the changes that were there during the photography of it. We would have to look at parts of the, the dog that normally you wouldn't look at, like the inner mouth with the tongue moving around for the dialogue or the teeth or, or pursing lips. Can you teach us how to work a stinking can opener? One of the procedures we had was to try and keep the mouth closed for the animation process. There's a whole sequence where um, Wilson is begging for Hubble to change his mind. It must have been a real hot day. His mouth is gigantic. And of course, we got to put his CG muzzle over top of that, and he's supposed to be talking. So it was a, an extensive amount of background replacement, basically removing the oversized, uh, over-exaggerated positions on the uh, muzzles. Now what you're looking at is what we call a slap comp. It's a, a first uh, render of the CG model with the lip sync animation applied to it. And you can see all the areas where we've got uh, going to have a very difficult time getting the animated muzzle to fit on top of the dog. And we spent weeks <laughs> painting out uh, unwanted portions of that. Oh, please, 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 please. I think the level of animation is incredible. It was, it was a real uh, testament to the efforts they put forth because they were not a company that was known for this kind of work. And uh, they really, everyone sort of stepped up because it was a sort of a proving ground for the little guys. I can do it. I can. I like that feeling. I like the feeling that, you know, people that were new uh, to the whole process um, got a chance to prove themselves. And it, you got that generous spirit from people across the board. It was a great cast to be, to be asked to be a part of. It was an honor and so much fun. It was a lot of fun. Everyone on set is great. I found, you know, going to set every day was a joy. And every step along the way, I had great fortune, great good fortune to work with the right people and generous people. And the spirit of this production, I think, comes through in the way in which the movie finally feels. And so I can't thank everybody enough for all of the help. Um, it's been an incredible first time for me. Uh, woof.